This is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to be looking at number 43 on the general curriculum math subtest. This is for elementary school teachers and special education teachers preparing to take the math MTELs for their licensure. But these are also, the 03 is also a really good test for elementary, middle school, and high school students that are preparing to take their math MTELs, whether it's the 53, the 47, you know, the 09, um, the 51 because these are really good problems that have core math and you're going to probably see something very similar to this um, or at least you know uh, uh, maybe a, a harder version but this is a good place to start so looking at number 43 it's at the end of the test it's in the data analysis and probability section so I'm gonna have some sort of in, I'm gonna have the inf part of the information presented in a chart so I'm gonna have to be able to be familiar enough with different types of charts, whether it's a histogram, a bar chart, or a chart like the one that we a table like the one we have before us, and be able to interpret the information. That's part of what this problem and the questions um, in this section are going to be requiring you to do. And the second time, I might have to do other things, like have an understanding of um, the keyword in this problem is probability. And so we'll talk about that as we do this one as well. So first, let's, uh, let's read the problem. Use the table below to answer the question that follows. And then we have here a table that says milkshake flavor preference. Then we have, I guess, the, the flavors, vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and then the age range. So if I look at this first row, 10, between 10 and 19, seven people like vanilla, 30 people like chocolate, 15 people like strawberry. So it's, it's important that since they are divided into these rows that you individually look at row by row. Now let's read the problem. A marketing company conducted a survey to determine milkshake flavor preferences among five different age groups. Based on the data in the table, what is the probability a randomly chosen 35-year-old customer will prefer a strawberry flavored milkshake? So, key words that stick out in this problem, let me just highlight a highlight with a different color. First of all, table. That's really sticking out here. We want you to be able to look at this table and be able to read it correctly. Another thing, probability. Probability is checks the likelihood of an, an event happening. So if I had a, a dartboard here and I want to find out what is the likelihood that when I throw the dart it lands in that portion, well you would say it's about one out of four chance. And that makes sense. It's one fourth of the whole. So I'm doing part to whole um, part to whole understanding. And probability is very much uses, you know, an understanding of part to whole. So you're gonna be using fractions you know, and percents and decimals. But um, this is about one fourth. What if I wanted to know what is the probability if I throw that dart and assuming that it lands on the dartboard, what is the probability that if it lands on the dartboard it actually gets into one of those zones? You might say, well, oops, you might say, well, two out of the four. So that's what we're gonna do here. Two out of four is one half. You could say it's, you know, approximately one half. Or if, the, if these answer choices were in percents, you could say there's a 50% likelihood or a 50% chance. Okay, now let's apply this to the problem. What is the likelihood, you know, if, so we're going to look at the age of the, in the 35 range. What is the probability that a randomly chosen 35-year-old customer will prefer strawberry? So I, I identified that age. 35 is right smack in between 30 and 39. Oh my God, I feel so old. <laughs> so what is my part and what is my whole? My whole is going to represent everyone in that group. And my part just rep represents the strawberry. So if we think about the whole, that's going to be 8 plus 14 plus 12. Well, 12... 8 plus 12 is 20. I just added this. I saw the 2 and 8 is going to make a nice 10. So I got 20 plus 14 gets me 34. So all together, 
34 people in that age group that were surveyed. Now, how many of that age group, what's my part? You know, how many of them actually like strawberry? 12. So I got 12 out of 34. Is that my answer? Some of you are saying yes, some of you are saying no. Well, it is an answer, but what I have to do is I have to reduce it. So let's see, what can I reduce 12 and 24? 12, I'm sorry, 12 and 34. What I can do is I can divide the 12 by 2. And I can divide the 34 by, um, oops, by 2. I picked the wrong fraction. Uh, but that's okay. When I divide these by 2, dividing that by, by 2 here, the 12 becomes a 6. And when I divide the 34 by 2, the 34 becomes 17. So here, sorry, I was pointing to the C, but the answer is D. Here, the lowest, the, the fraction that this is equal to is 6 17 um, Why is it 6 17 as opposed to 12 34 as a probability? Usually, well, two things. One, they want you to take this fraction and practice, you know, reducing it to lowest terms. Fine. That's why uh, it's, the answer is D. Um, the other aspect of it is, you know, when we're thinking about probability, you always want to take whatever fraction you have and in general reduce it to its lowest terms. So I don't want to leave something, you know, a fraction out there that could be reduced to its lowest terms. In general, I want to try and bring it down to its smallest uh, equivalent fraction. That means the fraction that, you know, can't be divided. That means a, a fraction with a denominator and a numerator that only share a 1 as a common factor. So 1 and 2 only share 1 as a common factor. Or 6 and 17. If you look at the factors of 6, what are the factors of 6? 1, 6, 2, and 3, and the factors of 17, 1 and 17. They only share 1 as a common factor. I'm doing a little review. Um, by the way, this is, this is how you know if a fraction is reduced to its lowest terms. Anyways, the probability of, of that person liking strawberry is 6 out of 17 in that age group of 30 to 39. Okay, team, I hope you found this helpful. Again, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Check out one of the Harvard Square MTEL Math workshops. Or uh, you can go to GoMath.com and sign up for some one-to-one -one tutoring to get some extra um, math support. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.